Hi everyone and welcome back. Today in the studio we have a client coming this afternoon. We're presenting their project in Portugal. So I thought I'd share with you behind the scenes of how we present two clients and how we get ready for that meeting. So come follow me and I'll show you upstairs. So we're upstairs now and I'm going to take you into the studio where we prepare all the hard finishes and the fabric schemes for our clients. The first thing Katie and I need to do to get ready for our client presentation is lay out all the fabrics and all the finishes into the trays and this means that they all look really neat and tidy and the clients can actually touch and feel every single material and surface that they'll have in their property to make sure that they're happy with those. So if you follow me I'll show you how we do that. Normally this is like a bit of a chaotic experience, <laughs> even though we've been working on it for a long, long time. The day of a client presentation, there's never enough time to do all the prep, but we're, we're on top of it, aren't we? We're yeah, organised. So I thought it might be fun for you guys to see how quite often I'll show on Instagram, like the close-ups of the fabrics and the trays. And I just thought moving on past when you were last in the office, Ollie, and we were designing that other project in London, this one's a little bit further along. So everything is chosen, specified, priced up. We're just doing one last presentation to the client before they hopefully sign everything off. Um, so Casey's been working on this project really hard with me. Um, and today we have just taken everything out of the plastic folders. Obviously, the amount of projects we've got going on, it would be a lot of storage space we'd need for every single room to have its own tray. So when they're not being presented, they're just kept in these plastic folders um, and everything's labelled by the project and the room type. And then we've just been laying all the fabrics out um, and little things as well, like just making sure there's no little bits of fluff. All the fabrics all get folded over neatly. Um, and we try and do it in order so you might have like upholstery fabrics and then if there's lots of cushions just a row of cushion fabrics um, and it's a chance for the clients to just see and touch everything and make sure that they're happy with that. How's it been uh, working on the project in Katie? It's been really really good I've really enjoyed it especially um, where we've known them before and we've managed to kind of capture their style but within a different project especially as it being overseas and slightly a bit more relaxed but still keeping within their style. And I'd say this is probably like one of our most contemporary projects we've done. Katie and I also designed a project in Mayfair that you did the video tour for. Um, and that was definitely our most contemporary. Yes. Um, but we quite enjoy doing a mix of styles. Everyone thinks we have like, we sit, stick with our signature style, but we love sort of exploring different types of interiors. So this is definitely going to be more contemporary. It was all, it's always the, been the guest bedroom, even though it looks really, really simple in the tray. Yes. I think the design side of it, mm with the furniture and everything yeah. really brings it together and it's really nice and warm but also neutral for a guest yeah. bedroom. Very paired back, very calming neutrals. It's just got this accent of this gold sandy colour um, and it's got this lovely grass cloth wallpaper which has got little flecks of gold in it. But it's more about the form isn't it and just being very sort of serene and simple yeah. in a tray like you say that doesn't look that it impressive. Really doesn't look <laughs> This is their sort of relaxed TV room. They're going to have a huge 65 inch TV. Um, it's even 85. Is it 85? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> massive. It's basically a cinema room. Um, and we've got a massive um, L shaped sofa, which is in this fabric. We're doing a lot of boucle, really heavily textured fabrics. Again, a really practical um, option for a sofa. Um, and then just to warm it up a little bit, because it's got quite a cold feel when you're in that space. There's no soft furnishings. It's got a lot of glass, a lot of wood. We're going to add this linen wallpaper. And actually the client decided they wanted wallpaper in every single room. So we're wallpapering every room. Then you've got all the cushion fabrics. We've got a slightly lighter boucle for the armchair. And we're bringing in this soft celadon green, um, which I love to use. Then we've got the entrance hall, which is looking quite bare, but that's because a lot of the finishes have to come from the basement into there. Um, love this tan leather, such a gorgeous um, colour. And we're going to have just a statement armchair under the staircase um, from BB Italia. And this is the scheme for the open plan living room, kitchen, and dining room. So in there, what we're going to do is add a huge marble splash back in the kitchen just to ramp up the luxury. We've also got a marble dining table, which we're having custom made. 
We have a really cool um, curved sofa. We did a curved sofa in their last um, project, which they love, and um, so they wanted to do that again. And then just keeping it very minimal on the cushions, we've only got three cushions in this entire room. Um, and then some leather chairs, leather dining chairs, leather bar stools. Um, when you're picking the leather fabrics, you have to be quite careful. So we're going for a white bar stool, which is quite controversial. <laughs> um, but the finish of the kitchen, like where the bar is, you always have to think like what it's going to be in front of. It's quite an insipid sort of taupe. Sometimes it looks pink, sometimes it looks grey. So if you don't get a really clear contrast, the bar stool could look a bit... Um, could clash with that. So by going white, you know it's going to have a definite contrast there. And then this is one of my favourite things. This has changed. We've tweaked this room quite a bit. But this is going to have an ombre effect. So it's going to fade from this darker taupe into the cream and it's going to go across the room. And if you look at this floor plan, so this is the open plan. This is the living area. We're going to do all bespoke joinery here with the TV. And then you've got the dining room. The dark part of the rug starts by the window and the dining room is going to be the same as the living room and they're both going to fade at the same rate. So this one is just going to go through to sort of mid tones around here, this sort of area. Whereas the living room is going to fade all the way into cream. So I think that's going to feel really cool. Almost like a beach with the sand and the water coming in. I would say for each client it's different, everyone's so different, but you have to kind of, when you're presenting to a client, gauge from them like how much level of detail they want. You know, some clients, their eyes glaze over if you start talking about cushion fabrics, you might just literally want to be like, there's the cushions, move on. <laughs> Whereas other people want to really like understand, like, okay, so that's what's on the front, what's on the back, what's the piping, how does that work? Um, so it really is on a case-by-case -case basis. But what I always say to every client is when they're looking at the schemes, to know that if it looks too much in a tray, that's a good sign because by the time it's dispersed across a room, it's going to be a lot more subdued and a lot more calming. So not to be alarmed by, you know, here looking at this like leopard print fabric seems to be like the main theme in this tray, but this is just the back of a dressing table chair and this is just a cushion. So just understanding what level of influence each item in this tray is going to have in the room as opposed to what it looks like in a tray. So you've got to think about the um, rules and regulations against upholstery out there and making sure that you're covering for FR treatment um, out in the country. Could you kindly there. explain to our viewers what FR treatment is? <laughs> so FR treatment is um, fire retardant. So like we in the UK have the biggest, so you've got to have SIG and MATCH, um, cigarette and MATCH um, tested. Um, not all fabrics come with that, so you do have to either have a treatment or an interliner. In Europe, it's slightly a little bit less, um, but we always make sure that we've got um, it to the full um, range yeah. um, to make sure that it's covered for all of our clients. Yeah, with this project we had a conversation last week, should we take it to that extra level and do up to UK standards even though it would pass Portugal, um, Portuguese standards? But then we thought what if they were to ever sell this project and take the furniture back to the UK? We just want to make sure there's no problems from them in the future and just to be doubly safe. Um, so we decided to do that. But this is also another challenging project because of Brexit. We've had a lot of Liz, our in-house accountant, who one day will get on film. We must like <laughs> we love we love Liz. She deals with all the hassle that you know people don't understand how much hassle there is involved in these projects. Like this is just the tip of the iceberg. We have to factor in what the customs will be, try and predict them as much as we can, what the um, transportation, storage, logistics will be and the insurance of all the furniture what the bill cost will be. We're working with a joinery firm out in Portugal um, who still haven't sent us their costs, which is a bit <laughs> frustrating because we really want to present to the client to the pound to know that this is within their budget, what we've agreed, um, but there are a couple of unknowns. And um, so I'd say that's the thing with working on an international project, you're not necessarily always working with the teams that you work with on every single project. You know, for us to take the, the joinery out from the UK to Portugal, it would just be a waste of the client's money. You're going to pay so much extra for shipping it out there, accommodation for them out there. So there's a few more sort of unknowns on each project when you do an international project. The next stage that we have to do before we're ready to present to our clients is take everything downstairs to our meeting room and we'll get the presentation on the screen. We run through that. We just make sure that we've got all the correct finishes. We do a couple of run throughs, talking as if the client was there and then everything's good to go. So follow me and I'll show you downstairs.
After we've checked all the trays upstairs, we bring them down to our meeting room. This is where we present to all of our clients. Um, I always like to just put the trays out one last time. Even though we have the same lighting down here as we do upstairs, sometimes the fabrics can look slightly different. So just make sure that everything still looks good with a different lighting. And then we don't show them every single tray at once because that's too overwhelming. Katie's going to get the um, presentation up on the big screen behind you. Um, but as we are going through each room on screen, we only have that tray in front of them. And then another thing we always do is we always get the clients to sit on this side. Um, and generally I'll sit here or someone that's working with me will sit here and one of us will be grabbing the trays. But I tend to turn into a bit of a weather woman when I'm presenting. <laughs> like, I like showing all the fabrics, but I- Can you give me a quick demonstration of that, sorry? Yeah, sure. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah FF You just need the clicker, don't you now? Yeah, <laughs> so I literally, I come over here, so we have some warm weather fronts coming in from the east. Um, no, but I think, it just, rather than trying to like point and explain what you're talking about, so we'll start with the sofa. This was the curved sofa that we mentioned earlier. It's quite similar to the one they've got in their UK home. Um, but why we chose this is because it's got really low back. And then behind there, you've got a beautiful view out into um, the surrounding countryside and looking down towards the beach. Um, this client loves metal sculptural pieces. Um, so we've got some lovely metal framed armchairs. Um, this is a really, really elegant um, coffee table. We've used this as a side table before, but we've tweaked the finishes. So often we'll work with existing um, pieces from manufacturers and then we'll work with that manufacturer and say, can we try it in this size with this finish just to make it a little bit more one-off. As you walk into the front door of the apartment, you can actually look all the way through to the end, um, through the hallway into the living room, out onto the balcony and the client didn't want to separate the two spaces but wanted to diffuse the view so there was a sense of privacy. Um, so we've designed these metal framed screens that will have um, weeded glass in them and that's going to still allow the light to come through but um, not make them feel like it's so open. I feel like screens are fast becoming one of our sort of signature um, items but we like to mix them up each time and try and make them a little bit different for each project. Oh yeah, perfect. So there's one screen. Um, and there's the other one, but between the two of them, they close this gap quite nicely. But if we had them side by side, I mean, you can't because you've got cupboards, but also it would become very tight walking through there. Yeah, there's almost like a, like a, like a delayed reveal I yeah. quite like about them so yeah. as you're entering the room, which is quite nice. Yeah, I think, yeah, and they just add some more architectural interest. This is a lovely apartment, but I think it was lacking um, just in the architectural side. So just adding those little details really elevates that. So we've got some really simple chandeliers above the dining table. Again, the ceiling height's not great, so we didn't want to have something that would be too bulky, um, but it just helps zone the area of the dining room away from the living room. Some really oversized dining chair, uh, bar stools. Um, we've just gone for three really big size ones rather than trying to squeeze lots of little ones in. Adding some pendant lights above the kitchen bar area. And then as always, putting some little cocktail tables. It's perfect for those sunset drinks. You can just pick your drink down. <laughs> <laughs> so you walk in here through the dressing area, which is quite nice. It almost creates a little separate entrance lobby before you get to the um, actual bedroom area. Here we've designed some custom joinery that's gonna be the dressing table. And there's a TV on the wall here. And then the rest of it was just kept really simple. There's a lovely window here, so we didn't wanna block that view. These are all French doors. We've got a nice little armchair there in the corner add some softness. This is the artwork that we used in the Mayfair project. We wanted something that was quite hard wearing. Originally we were going to look at porcelain um, flowers on the wall but they are quite delicate and the client was worried about with maintenance and the cleaning how um, fragile they would be so we went to these metal discs instead which we know are much more right, robust. These are also uh, illuminated as well? They are in the Mayfair project. We don't have power here so they won't be illuminated here but yes they can be. Again, I think because this is going to be above the headboard wall, having them lit wouldn't necessarily be so nice when you're lying in bed. Um, but it just adds a lot of interest. And I like how they can kind of scatter across that wall, almost as if it's like blowing away in the wind. And then we've got an oversize on the bedside tables, really extra wide. This is the concept for the dressing table here with the, t the floating uh, drawers that go under the TV. It just adds a little bit of storage. and it, Otherwise the TV looks so awkward just on the wall. This is the actual view out of their bedrooms. You can see it's a beautiful view with all these trees and they kind of slopes down towards the water.
Thank you so much for showing us a little bit of no that. No worries. Insight into <laughs> the project, guys. Hopefully um, you'll be able to come with us when we install it in summer. Absolutely. Okay, guys, that's a wrap. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed seeing a little bit behind the scenes, but we have a client arriving, so you're going to have to go. But before you go, if you are enjoying this content, don't forget, hit that subscribe button, and you can also follow us on Instagram, at Sophie Pass Interiors, and we'll see you in the next one.